we are talking about today uh, new relationships. Welcome to 2023, everyone. Welcome. And we are going to be talking about uh, expectations and relationships and um, all the things that come with the newness of the, the developing of a relationship, whether that's you're in the vetting stage, whether you're dating, maybe you're already in a long term relationship that is leading to marriage. What are some expectations? What are some things to consider? And, you know, like Margaret always says, we want to leave you with some practical tools. You know, um, and we're going to get into that. So if you all, you all have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. All right. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Ramesha. And one of the things you all will hear, and I'll keep repeating it, but you'll hear the ladies consider themselves a former wife, a future wife, or a current wife. And that's just something that I like to say because I firmly believe whether you are currently married, formerly married, or want to be married, we should carry ourselves as wives. Wives move differently. And you always used to hear Kevin say that, right? Are you a wife? And it puzzled me at first because I'm like, why is he asking that? She's not married yet. But then it dawned on me, oh my goodness, you really should be a wife before you are married. So a little bit about my background. I was married young at 25. I was married for 10 years. I absolutely loved being married, loved creating a warm and welcoming home. Uh, however, it was a 50-50 modern marriage. You couldn't tell me anything, right? We all know what we know. Hindsight is 2020. So it did end in divorce. I am happy to say um, we co-parent really well now. Uh, and I have two sons from the marriage. So two teenage boys. And then since the divorce, I've been in a long-term relationship with someone that Kevin would categorize as a high value man. So I've had to do a lot of work and a lot of personal development to change my mindset from that modern woman thinking to being more of a traditional support system. I could not be happier, but I have bumped my head. I have skinned my knee. And uh, yeah, I'd like to go ahead and be transparent with you all. The reasons I wanted to start with something new. Happy New Year. This is our first Wives Club episode of 2023. Um, the last couple episodes as we ended 22, 2022, we talked about conflict in the Christmas week. And then we talked about uh, ending relationships with grace uh, in our um, New Year's week. So it's a new year, new beginnings, fresh start. What does AB always say? Let's hope this is the last year that we're single, right? Okay. So new relationships and managing expectations. And I always ask my guy before I come into these things, I'm like, you know, help me understand. Let me pick your brain. What are we doing wrong? What can we do better as women? But if you all remember, Kevin always used to say something. Men control, women control access to sex and men control access to relationships. And ladies, believe me, as hard as it is, he thinking that we can control things we can't. Believe me, if we could, I would have a book and have cracked the code by now. So, you know, I like to say that because we're not going to change them, the only power that we have is the veto power. Are we going to stay and um, become part of their life and their goals and their timeline and their everything? Or are we going to say, you know what, this isn't a match for me uh, and I need to move on and find out what I want. So, First thing I want to start with is establishing relationships. If we know that and we accept that, we have to know that it is the man who establishes when we are in relationship. I think sometimes as women, we make that mistake that we've been seeing each other for so long or this amount of time has passed or in my mind, we go together. So we must go together. Hear me and hear me well, because it's happened to me until he says out of his mouth that I'm not seeing anybody else. I don't want you to see anybody else. I'd like to see you exclusively. I want to see where this goes until the man establishes that you all are an item. You are not. And we have to assume well, we have to understand that we're not and not expect him to do things that are relationship based if he hasn't established that. Now, I know sometimes hmm, signals can be kind of messed, you know, mixed up, but you know, Kevin said, you know, it's our responsibility to date for intention, date with intention, right? So if we're just having a great time with somebody and we love their company and just kicking it and all that, that's great. But 
make sure that he has set the tone for what it is and what it isn't so there's not confusion and we'll talk about you know the different stages of a relationship but anything up to that point you should assume he is seeing other people and if you choose to see other people that's fine but i wanted to start with when a relationship begins so i did see that lisa was able to hop on so we'll come back around but av i'm going to come to you first any thoughts on establishing the beginning of a relationship yeah, the beginnings of a relationship. This is the fun times, right? Like this is really where it's like the memorable experiences you have with someone because as you go further along in the relationship, you really get used to each other. Um, but I'd like to bring that 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 energy into the beginning of things, especially at the new year, right? Um, when we are at the beginnings of a relationship, Kevin used to always ask people two things and Maggie touched on one of them. Are you dating with intention? Number one. And the second question he would ask people is, you know, if you're asking someone, hey, you know, I'm, I'm dating with the intention to be married, what in what time frame? I think it's such an important question, but you have to tread lightly with that question. <laughs> it's something that I've learned, right? Especially when it comes to people that, um, you know, may already have a preset, um, you know, timeline for themselves, or maybe they have a looser timeline for themselves. Um, but I think uh, as women, especially those of us in the danger zone, <laughs> it's a loaded question because what can happen is sometimes we can put a lot of pressure on people un inadvertently, unintentionally, um, and that can really um, take some of the authenticity in getting to know somebody away That's uh, or getting to know someone um, at the beginning, right? That's something that I've learned, at least in my early 30s, um, dating right now because you know sometimes it can come off as you're rushing because you have that internal clock but at the same time if you're really looking for a man that is truly going to protect you and and offer that covering um and be the best you know husband he can be you do want to take your time a little bit with that so i would say you know one of the biggest lessons i've taken away as a future wife is despite what the internal clock is saying, you may want to take your time with these things and not rush into anything, right? Um, sorry, my monitor's going off, but I definitely wanted to offer that on our first round. Absolutely, thank you so much for that, A.B. And Lisa, uh, I see you were able to hop in if you would like to just introduce yourself. And then the first question was about establishing a relationship, how that happens, any thoughts about the very beginning or step zero? I would just say, hey everybody, I'm sorry I'm late. I'm happy to be here, happy to be back. I would just say, um, I don't know what everybody else meant, but I would say start off with good energy. Um, and I guess two boundaries, good energy and boundaries, making your um, good energy known and setting a few boundaries, not maybe not all boundaries, but a few, just so both parties are comfortable. So those are two I can think of first. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Lisa. Yes, I love that good energy. And speaking of good energy and all of the plants that bring us the good, wholesome energy, Hermesha, what do you have to say about starting a relationship? Yes, these brands, plants are going to give us some life virtually. <laughs> this thing is really just chilling right here, y'all. <laughs> We're going to go with it, right? But, uh, you know, um, you know, the first thing that comes to mind for me when I think about, you know, the newness of any type of relationship, uh, something I've been reminded of, of, of just guarding your heart, you know, guarding your heart above all things, right? For it's the wellspring of life. And so something I've been sitting with, um, because, you know, as a hopeless romantic, <laughs> you know, we, as women in general, right, we can, we can, we can be at the wedding day. We can be in the in the birthing room for those of you who want to have children. We could be in the retirement home. I mean, you've been seeing the whole life, <laughs> or you or or you're you're retired already. So what I'm getting at, ladies, we we can see the whole life, or get all excited and begin to envision what life could look like with this person, right? And we can get so ahead of ourselves that we look up like, wait, are we together? Actually. 
So <laughs> I love what Margaret said that, and it's true, because this is something that Kevin echoed, that men control access to, to relationships at the end of the day. They are the ones who sort of make it official, make it known, like, hey, we are this. Would you like to be this <laughs> type of thing, right? And, you know, men will also know a time frame. You know, one thing I've noticed is that, you know, though we as women may have a time frame, and like Ab Evelyn said, us being clear that we're dating with intention, men also have a time frame. But, you know, sometimes those time frames can be, uh, they're not set in stone. If a man finds a woman and he knows that she's a wife, they're willing to renegotiate their own time frame, believe it or not, if it's worth it to snatch her off the market, if you will. Um, but in general, when the man is ready, he's going to be ready and he's going to you're going to know that he's ready and he's going to be committed. So just to echo what Margaret said, and I think for us as ladies um, is guarding our hearts in the process and what that could look like in a practical way is just staying in the here and now. We can be so far down the future and all the things and the excitement, but just staying in the moment, moment by moment, meeting him moment by moment, conversation by conversation, text by text. He's gonna set the tone, we follow, it's a dance, right? Um, and so that's something I would say on the first round, guarding your heart, following his lead, is not official until he makes it known and you take it one step at a time. Doom, doom, doom. I know, but I don't like it. I'm going to say, I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. Okay. Sorry. I just had to have that little outburst. It is so true, ladies. Uh, one of the things that my guy said, when you're in the beginning stages of a relationship, this, you know, bringing the joy, but just getting to know this man, there is no need in those few first few, you know, dates or whatever that he knows how many kids you want and what their names are going to be. I have been that person. I have planned it all out and we can just blow past. Is this even somebody that I want to live with for the next 30, 40, 50 years? We really need to give it time to see if we are compatible. And again, this is why, you know, we as women, I mean, it's, it's unfair, but we can't waste our good years because then when the light bulbs go off whether or not we know it we kind of have that like sense of urgency that it's like it's all around us that everything we do is kind of like are you the one are you the one are you the one and you know what Hermesha said about the timelines we can want as bad as we want our way but because the man controls the relationship what we have to do is look at their life and their goals and their timeline and see if it aligns with ours. What we can't do is wrestle them down to do it our way on our time in the Disney fantasy that we've created. I've done the same thing too, because believe me, if you force it, then you're going to have to keep that same energy throughout the lifetime of the relationship. And that pressure is built for shoulders and not hips. So what I would advise, some tangible things I always like to do in the beginning, I think we women can do a lot better job of listening to the men because they're going to tell us everything that we need to do to know. And especially when you meet a man who's built himself, he is who he is and they're going to say things. And sometimes we just blow past them. Yeah, uh -huh, uh -huh, I got it. But yeah, you want five kids, right? No, I grew up in the family, just me and my brother. I think two is fine. No, 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 but yeah, you, I come from a big family. You, you got to want a big family, right? No, listen to them because they're really telling us everything that we need to know. If we would slow down and stop running that movie that we have playing in our head. So what we can do better, myself included, listen to what they say about what they want and then also listen to what they say about any exes any bad experiences so you can really start understanding what their turnoffs are and ladies it's okay if in our head we're already bought the house had the kids wedding all of that stuff but guarding that and not letting all of it show in the beginning let them take time men are deliberate they look at so many other factors and it may take them longer. Hermesha said it may take them sooner. If they find you as a wife and they're like, that's the one, I got to snatch her up. That could be an option. 
but it could take longer than you want. So you got a decision to make. Is it your timeline that's the priority or is it this man? And nobody can make that decision for you. If he is your person, then you lock arms with him. His goals are your goals. His timeline is your timeline. His dreams are your dreams. And you, you know, support him in that relationship. But if you know that marriage and family and all that is what you have to have, and he has dreams of, you know, uh, I don't know, traveling the world and living in five different states, and you really want stability, what you can't do is change him. What you can do is exit with grace and go find that somewhere else. Yeah, no worries. Thank you, Maggie. All really, really good points, right? Like that, these are things we need to be aware of in early stages of dating. Uh, especially when we're thinking about time. You know, I was kind of mentioning how sometimes from what I've been seeing that biological clock, we can put some pressure on people when we don't need to, right? Uh, but at the same time, it's also super, super important to date with intention like Kevin had mentioned. Um, the other big thing that, you know, he often talked about is understanding what type of wife you will be. But even before you understand what type of wife you will be, I think it's really important to understand the world of the person that you're kind of stepping into you know like let's say that he has a specific job that's different um where it does require him to be away from the home a little bit more often well if we know that we're moving as wives right and if the goal is a family if that is your goal or if your goal is um you're okay with not having a traditional family setting or a home setting these are things that are really important to think about before you enter into any type of relationship with any man and really understanding what his day-to-day -day looks like right uh what his world looks like what his profession looks like what his demands will look like looking at timelines as far as okay um if he's at i don't know let's say the age of 40 if he's still going to be working for the next 15 years before he retires uh, it's all really important to think about uh, because we never want to put ourselves in positions where we're unhappy either, right? You always want to make sure that you're showing up and bringing your best self to the relationship, right? Uh, so that's one thing that I would just mention from what I've been seeing, um, you know, just kind of complimenting what Maggie was saying, what Hermisha was saying, and what Lisa is saying. We always want to move as wives first because that's what sets you apart in the marketplace and also how they find you. So that's what I have. Oh, I love that. That is so good. We're going to talk about that expectation setting in a bit. But Lisa, I'm going to come over to you now. Any other thoughts you had on um, the beginnings of a relationship? Well, you know, I'm still sticking to self-awareness. But what I was thinking about, too, is like um, your representative. When you meet somebody, a lot of us, if we're not self-aware, we're, we're introducing people to our representative, how we like people to um, see us or how we like to appear and if you're when I think like meeting new friends and, and co-workers and stuff a representative is spot but in meeting um, uh, your spouse I think you need to go a little beyond your representative and make sure you're again the self-aware helps there being self-aware who you're putting forward and it's not your representative this is the person you know you, you're putting your representative should be your wife the person where all working to um, present to the world and finding someone, which is our wife representative. I guess that, that could be a thing. <laughs> I know it wasn't a thing when I was out there, but it probably should have been. Um, my representative probably wasn't my best wife representative. It all worked out in the end, I believe, and I'm still, still a work in progress, but I think uh, if it helps anybody, make sure the representative you're putting out there on these first uh, interactions is also the wife representative, not the one that you use for work or other parts of your life, I guess is the best way to put it, if that makes sense. It does. Thank you so much. And Lisa is our current wife, our happy housewife and mom. Uh, thank you so much, Lisa. So Hermisha, any other thoughts about um, the beginning stages of a relationship? And then I will read the comments. Any other questions or comments, you guys can put them in the chat or raise. Okay. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> first off, I just want one thing I was going to say is um, notice how he pursues you. And again, we can get into the giddiness of it all and the excitement. It's like, oh, you know, um, 
but notice how he pursues you and what he leads with. That's going to give you an indication in the level of interest he has for you. Is this just for a good time or a long time? And I'm sort of trying to train my ear to, to do that myself in terms of, you know, just learning all of these things. This is new for me as a, as a former wife. Um, and so I would say, notice how he, what he leads with, you know, is he sharing his world with you? Right? Does he share a little bit of, of what he does for a living or uh, some of his interests? Is he interested in your world? Is he interested in what you do for a living or the day-to-day, -day, how you're doing or your 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 well-being, if you will, right? These things can be, you know, although relationships of any kind are new, they are gonna be expressing an interest in who you are as a person, right? I know our utility is important to a man, but they also wanna know who you are as a person. Part of being a wife and moving as a wife is who you are at the core of your being. Right. Like in terms of the core characteristics of, you know, who you are. And so they're going to be interested in, you know, your personality and all those things. Um, uh, and they're going to share a little bit of their world with you. So that's something that I would say, just kind of watch that, because sometimes, you know, you know, they can lead with and men are visual men are men. Right. And, you know, they're, they're going to be attracted to the physical and. You know, um, and that's okay because that's that's how the Lord wired men, <laughs> right? Um, Adam saw Eve and said, "Oh, bone of my bone," <laughs> right? Uh, but is that all he's leading with, right? Is it all the time? Is that the consistent thing, right? Is just getting you in the bedroom? Not to say that he's not going to desire that, but is that is that the level of your connection? Is that all that it that it you know is that it right and so i think that that's something that uh, um thinking about this topic um just just being in the excitement of it all notice what he leads with how does he pursue you on whatever level is he interested in you as a person and does he share a bit of his world to you little by little and we'll go from there yeah Oh, I really love it. And on the flip side of that, Hermisha, if he doesn't do those things, that kind of answers the, the question that, you know, you know, we, we have to be honest about. But on a positive note, in a new year, you know what, in the beginning of a relationship, I love love. And if you're going to be in a long term relationship, there's no, there's no time that you'll have to make that first impression again. So I say, you know, definitely present the best um, of yourself and, and show up with joy. I think we are as women in our happiest when we are you know, in a loving relationship. And it's so rare. That's why when you find one, you want to be as prepared as you can be. I'm coming to the comments, but I just thought of something that I'll say and then I'm going to read the comments. When I talk to my guy, he said, men think about relationships in stages and it's almost like a tragic irony as women because I grew up, a lot of us grew up dreaming of that day, what it's going to look like, right? Who's going to be there? What the cake is going to look like? Maybe you did, maybe you didn't. But the point I'm making is that men and women are so different. We think about for a long time, you know, arriving at that wedding or that relationship or that love. Men don't. They have a conquer, whether he's a high value, Henry, hit squad or whatever, they have this conquer mentality. They want to build a legacy, make a name for themselves, you know, have their name etched in stone, you know, for you know infinity and beyond. They don't think about relationships in the same longing for decades the way that we do. So men get to a point where they're like, oh, okay, I've done everything that I can by myself. Now I need a wife to go further, whether it is, you know, family legacy or I need that feminine asset. Kevin used to talk about this, you know, how men sometimes can't um, uh, ascend in their careers without having, you know, that feminine asset. So they haven't been dreaming about it the way that we have. So we have to remember that. This is what my guy said. First, a man wants a relationship. So are we seeing each other exclusively? Then after that, he wants a good relationship. You know what? I got a good girl. Yeah, we get along great. We're having a good time. 
then he wants a great relationship. You know, I got a real one here. This one compared to the ones that are out here or the ones that I've had before, this one right here is a real one. Then after the great relationship, then he starts thinking, man, I need to take her off the market. I need to lock this down. It's only at that point that they start thinking about buying a ring and then eventually proposing. So the point I'm making is there's so much more time that a man has to check off all the boxes that are important to him. And meanwhile, we have to be consistent in that waiting. We have to be pleasant and we have to be patient. We can't rush it. And I know it's incredibly hard. I have been given that feedback because I'm the one who's like, hooray, let's jump out of the, the plane, you know, hope the parachutes work. And I've been told, hey, 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 we got the rest of our lives pump your brakes. I need you to find, this is what he always tell me, find your center. You're up here, you're down here, find your center. And I'd be like, oh, you just shut down all of the fun. But I've, ha I've had to learn that they are just going to be much more measured. Okay. So I wanted to offer that. We'll do another lap, but let me read what you all are sharing. Um, I've learned that it's never good to assume. It's important to ask softly, but clearly. I also learned to stop wearing my heart on my sleeve a couple of years ago. I used to daydream my life with someone and then reality hits and it's completely different. Who's been there before? I observe actions and tread lightly. I really like that. And listen to what they say. But as Hermesha said, we also watch what they do. Are they including you in their day to day? And when they talk about their future, are you a part of that future? Or are they just talking about all the great things they're going to do? Love that. Ooh -wee, this is so good. You can't force it, y'all. And this is probably the number one thing as modern women that we are going to have to let go. And it is so much easier said than done. We are trained to compete. I can do what men can do. I'm just as smart. I'm just as strong. I'm ready. I'm a great catch. All my friends say I'm a great catch. Why aren't you ready yet? You literally imagine the balloons that you just let go and watch them float away. Because believe me, when you force it, you will be miserable because in every way you will be reminded or they will remind you this is what you wanted. And there's no feeling worse in my mind. It is so much better to wait and have it come genuinely from the man. It would be better than you have ever imagined, maybe later than you wanted, but better. Um, thing I've experienced in the beginning of dating, the guy's communication style. As a woman dating with intentions, a, a woman dating with intentions, understand how you communicate and how the guy uh, I'm struggling with this. Who's pursuing communicates is in sync because beginning phases of dating and communication sets the tone for the rest of the relationship. For me, communication is a form of intimacy. Building that strong foundation is important. Okay. So I'll just say this and then we'll take another lap. I want to be crystal clear. There is a difference between dating and relationships. And I don't disagree with you, but dating, the whole purpose of dating is to see if there is a match, to see if this is a fit. Is this something I want to pursue from your perspective and from the man's perspective? So until a relationship has been established, we shouldn't put too much weight on dating. I think that's what we do. And then we end up the difference between what is it? Expectations and reality is that disappointment. So once you're in relationship and you all, he has established, yes, you are the one I want to pursue. Absolutely. But I think communication is important all the way around. Um, but let's not get ahead of ourselves trying to build a foundation when we're dating. Let's save that for a relationship. Just my two cents. Thoughts or any comments on what's in the chat? Yeah, absolutely. These are all nuggets, guys. And it's super, it's so good to see you guys interacting in the chat and to hear your comments as well, to see what you guys are experiencing, what you have experienced in the past. That's all really, really good stuff. Um, so it's so, it's so good to read that. Um, I love what Maggie just mentioned about, you know, almost like keeping a high, like keeping a man. And one of the biggest things is not competing with him. That means emotionally sometimes. So not competing with him emotionally, not competing with him professionally. Um, like I think it, you, when you bring two people together and they have their own life experiences from two different places, you have a much richer conversation when you're that open. Um, and it's, it's great. It definitely is. 
the other thing I mean, i'm sorry i'm just flipping around here guys because i want to make sure that i bring you these notes from those conversations that i had with kevin um i want to just circle back to moving like a wife you know he would talk about this in many different episodes and that means pre-relationship during relationship even post relationship he said that he met so many women that moved like wives but you would be able to spot them meaning it would wait for you to open the door right like women would wait <laughs> for you to open the door before um you know a, a man would move forward or you know if you're on a date like he would you know these women would stop and they're like hey you didn't open the door for me this is an expectation i'm drawing that line right um it's almost like showing him hey this is how i move as a wife but i think that there are certain behaviors we have as wives early on where you know it could be things um that are in the bedroom that you want to make sure that you take care of before um before kind of getting intimate with somebody and that shows how you move yourself as a wife it could be um different things as far as like your schedule and the expectations that you have and i'm just going to circle back to what lisa was saying when it comes to boundaries um respecting your schedule and not really changing that you know a lot of times people get into relationships and things kind of change um at the start of it because you're so excited and there's so much excitement um going into it uh, so i would just say try to be consistent um because that's what wives do so whether you have a routine before meeting someone that routine should still be the same after you meet that person and it should be consistent uh so that's that's the only other thing i would offer here lisa i'm going to come to you any other thoughts um, I remember being told, <clears throat> and still hearing it even now, um, you know, moving like a wife. Um, yes, babe, I'm with my daughter. But um, main thing I was told is um, when I was out looking for people, um, or when I was dating people in the early stages, like, see how he treats his mother. See how he treats his relationship with his mother. Hi. Observe that. And... Um, you know, I would even question, like, where's your mom at? Or how, how do you and your mom get along? Or how often do you communicate? And my mother-in-law is like my girlfriend now. <laughs> I think my mother-in-law, you know, she does, Hi. she does so much. She's so great in my life. And um, I just can't imagine. Um, I just remember being taught, you know, you see how they treat their mother. And that'll tell you a lot about um, how he's going to treat his wife. So I just remember early on being taught that. And, you know, still hearing it to this day, um, I have nephews, um, you know, there's young men in my family. My, my husband talks to his brothers and they're like, they, they give their nephews advice on the video game when they're talking. And, you know, the, how, do, how do you treat your mother? And um, that was just a big, that's a big, moving like a wife, that's something to notice. And letting it be known that, you know, he should be treating his not 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 you gotta tell me he should be treating his, but just how how does he treat his mother that's gonna a great insight on how he's gonna treat you thank you so much for that lisa and hi Lisa. i'm gonna come to you anything else to add or any response to the comments yeah no this is good ladies um <clears throat> the other thing that that i'm noticing or, or want to add to it no matter what stage you're, that we're in the process to stay in our feminine to stay in your um, your feminine. Uh, and I think someone else said it, being consistent, right? Because, uh, you know, it's a journey. And the men are watching, or the men that's vetting you is watching how consistent you are um, and trying to learn you at the same time. And so I would say stay in your feminine. And this is important because for those of us who are like go-getters like myself and you know we can we like to make things happen right we know how to make things happen in our profession and and all the things right and we can jump the gun and I remember when I met with Kevin he had a saying for that and it was it was quite vulgar I'm trying to decide if I should it's not my quote but y'all know what I'm what I'm gonna say he said Put your, you know what, down. Put it down. Um, because when we're we're trying to make things happen or initiate or whatever we're trying to do or jump start something, 
you're you're not in your feminine. You're you're in your masculine role. You're trying to lead in this way where the man the man has acts. He he's the one that that um, has access to the relationship. So in that context, if we're trying to make things happen, then yeah, we need to put that down, right? Um, and so staying in the feminine, in the feminine, the practicality of that is just sitting and receiving. When he, when I remember he was saying, Misha, you need to learn how to rest in your feminine. I want to, I'm like, Kevin, I'm trying to rest. He's like, well, you cut back your, cut back your hours at work. I'm like, I'm trying, Kevin. I, well, I, I'm going to do that. And I did that. And, you know, there was some other things going on in that dynamic. But when he was, what he was getting at is learning how to sit and receive, learning how to sit and just be. And I love what Margaret said. I think her guy said, what is your center? And I immediately thought of this sort of, <laughs> and I say that with my clients in therapy, ground yourself. Find something to ground yourself because it can feel like an emotional roller coaster because there's a lot of unknowns. But just be consistent, stay in your feminine, sit and receive. And we really think about it, ladies. That's a peaceful spot to be where you're just like, you know, I'm just going to sit here and be me. I'll let him figure that out. I'm just going to be me. And he has an opportunity to just get to know me. I'm on the movie screen and he's just he's in the theater. He's the only one watching your movie. Oh, I like that analogy. You're the movie, ladies. You're the premiere. Oh, wait a minute. You're the premiere. And he's got exclusive tickets to you. He's in the front row seat, like watching, like, hmm, let me see. Do I wanna, do I wanna hire this show personally? Do I want this show for the rest of my life? Like really, right? When we think about it like that. So it's a beautiful thing. You're just being you, you're just sitting and receiving and um, grounding yourself. The other part I wanted to add is reading the room. We think about that in the context of when we're out and we're networking and we can be useful to our man, depending on the type of man we have. But I would maybe apply it in this dynamic. Read the flow of the energy of the relationship. Right? What what is he saying? What is what is he giving off? And you can read the flow. Like, okay, I probably I'm not gonna say too much here, but I'm gonna respond. I'm gonna be engaging. I'm not gonna just give him one word answer. I'm going to read the energy or the flow of what he's trying to say to me, and I'm going to match that. I'm not going to go above and beyond it. I'm going to match it and show him that I'm still engaged. I'm not going to jump towards the wedding. He's right here. He's not, you right? So that, that's what I would say if this is all landing. Absolutely. I think, uh, Hermisha, you've missed your calling from the theatrical. I'm telling you, from the piano playing to the rapping to the movie theater. I mean, I was having a vision. I was like, I'm not nearly this artistic. But um, thank you so much for that, Hermisha. I do want to respond uh, to the comments and thank you all uh, for sharing. And I think we are, you know, maybe emphasizing that uh, point as far as when it comes to relationships, the men are in the driver's seat, full stop. We just cannot steer it the way we want to. And that is a very big pill to swallow. But once you do, a lot of this other stuff will make sense. So a couple things that I've had to do, and I'll give you guys some tangible things. Um, while you are being vetted by a man, like um, Evelyn said, I think there's a balance that we have to play between being available and being a support system to them, but also maintaining our own interest in our own life. I have been that woman waiting. When am I going to see him again? You know, when is he going to call? Like, oh, is that him? Did I miss something? And there's a part of that excitement that is good, but there's also a part of that that can be off-putting because when a man saw you, he saw you hopefully busy about doing something that he liked and he wants to see more of that. So when you stop doing those things and you're only focused on him, it's almost like, oh dear. And if you listen to a lot of, you know, working for a technology company, I, I work in a masculine environment with a lot of men and I've heard them say, oh my God, my wife, she doesn't do anything. She just calls, when are you coming home? They don't like that aspect of it. So I would offer, 
if you have hobbies, if you have things that you uh, want to do, continue to do that in a way that still makes you available for him so that when you when you all do come back together, you have something to offer. I'll share with you all. I've started, you know, a couple side hustles, uh, whether it's, you know, businesses or Internet channels. I host an Airbnb. I bought season tickets just for me to go to the symphony, the ballet, the um different things around the city that I've just had to say, you know what, I want to continue to have life experiences, you know, for myself. And this is not about bragging. I went here, I went there, but it occupies me and it gives me something to look forward to. So when I do see him the next time, it's with joy. And it's not like, you know, where have you been lately? Because a man doesn't want to feel that pressure, especially if his timeline is not matching your timeline. If his they are in control of the relationship and their vetting process is their vetting process. We can't change it. We can't speed it up. When they are ready, we will know. But if they're not ready, that's because they're not ready. All we can do is present the best version of ourselves. And if our timeline is different, we can exit, but we cannot change them. I just want to emphasize that. I'm going to respond to the comments that came in. I really loved what I'm saying as far as I used to daydream and then wear my heart on my sleeve. Ladies, it's real, you know, especially when hmm, I remember being with my guy and he never used to get, in my opinion, he never used to get it why women were so like, you know, is this the one? Is this the one? Until I watched a season of, you all know that dating show, The Bachelorette or ba one of those shows and watching through the rose ceremony. And if you don't know, it's just this dating show, whether you like it or not, but basically one man or one woman has 20 plus suitors. They have these dates and then they give a rose to the one who stays and the ones who don't. And just the tense in that moment while the women are kind of thinking, you know, is he going to pick me? Is he going to pick me? And he was like, oh my goodness, is this what y'all go through? And I'm like, yes, I've been trying to tell you. We are on the receiving end of you all like making this huge decision. He was like, wow, I get it now. So when I say they really don't think about it the way that we do, they really don't. So it's not our job to try and show them how much we want it. It's our job to continue to bring um, joy to ourselves why, in a way that's still, you know, feminine and elegant and all of that, but they really don't dream about it the way that we do. So understanding it and letting that go is it has been a huge thing for me. So thank you so much for that. Because watching what they do and having moderate reactions, not zero and not 10. I've had to work very hard to kind of stay at five. If it happens, it's great. If it doesn't happen, I understand. That has been a process uh, for me. Um, communication style. I will say this. Yes, in dating, but in all of their life events. We talked about this a couple streams ago, maybe last stream about a man, someone had a comment about communication issues in the relationship. And I remember asking, was it just with you? Or was it in all of the areas he's in? Be mindful of that. A man who is on his purpose, who is ready, he will come find you, stand square and look at you and say, I'm so-and-so and I'd like to get to know you better. And you know, we're kind of like, oh my goodness. So the communication style, if there's anything dodgy about that, it's probably just not in the relationship area. It's probably in other things because a man who's ready, they don't have the time to waste to play games. So if you are having those flaky, available, not available, ghosting, but you know it's on, then it's hot, off, it's hot, then it's heavy. I would offer that you're probably not in a real relationship or at least not the type of relationship that you would think would sustain you because a man who is ready communicates clearly to you because he communicates clearly in other areas of his life as well. And so if you see him communicating in other areas of life, but you're just not see, hearing what you want to hear, it's not a communication area. It's he's either he doesn't see you as a wife or he doesn't see you as a wife yet. So just offering those those two things. Um, and then <laughs> Misha's promote your movie. <laughs> Buy tickets to the movie. Said, I made him marry me. And that feeling was like, wow, I never wanted that to be said of me. Although I can't make anyone do anything, but still 
I love how transparent you have been and how forthcoming you have been in these. And ladies, we do it. Oftentimes we don't know that we're doing it, but it, it's kind of like, you know, when you've been around someone who's been drinking too much and they're like, no, I'm fine, I'm fine. But you smell it, like you can sense it on them. So it's okay if we've overplayed our hands, you know, before and we were bullheaded and you couldn't tell us anything. We just have to accept that and just know that when a man is ready, he will make moves if we watch them close enough, we see how they move when they really want something. So if they can get up and do other things that they want and they're not doing it with us, it's not our job to try to change them. It's to realize that, to accept that. And like I always say, all we have is veto power. We can either stay or we can go, but we can't change them. So you either stay and enjoy the relationship that you have, or maybe you have to move on. But I'm so sorry that I'm I understand. I have tried to strong arm things in the past too. And I'll share with you all when I got divorced after 10 years, um, my ex-husband looked at me and said, well, I thought you were driving this bus. And I was mind blown because in my twenties that we can do anything bullheaded, strong Maggie was exhausted after 10 years of making decisions, of paying bills, of taking care of the kids, of taking care of this dog that I didn't want, making your appointments, all of that. I was exhausted, but I was projecting that, oh, if nobody doesn't do it, then I'm going to get it done. I'm going to make sure this happens. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that instead of resting. And it wore me out. And what I was doing was giving him permission to sit back and be like, oh, if I don't do it, you know, she's going to do it. And then I was like, I never wanted to drive that bus. That's why now you can have the keys, you can have the steering wheel, you can have all of it. I do not want it. So you're not alone, my dear. All right. Anything else you want to share about new relationships? No, I think this was a very colorful conversation and we covered it from so many different angles. Um, I would just say, you know, kind of echoing what Hermisha was saying, Margaret was saying, and a little bit of what Lisa was saying too, is just be very, very confident and comfortable in who you are at the beginning and sustain that as you go. Absolutely. And Lisa, any final thoughts from you about new beginnings and new relationships? Awareness. That's going to be my motto from here on out. And uh, remain feminine. Staying in your feminine and whatever helps, you know, listening to our calls, you know, staying in a, a feminine mind space, being around other females who are married or married minded, you know, I think that really helps even after you're married like me, um, being around people who are like minded and just keeping that femininity because that's what they want. They, if they want to be around guys, they're going to be around guys, but when they want somewhere soft and, and they want what they want from women and they want it from you. If you're not sending out that femininity, where are they gonna get it from? Here we go. All right, well said, I'm clear. Anybody else and Hermisha, any final thoughts from you on new relationships? Yeah, this is really good as always. I'm always just, Margaret, if I may on this point, these topics, I'm like, they feel like they're always so right on time. <laughs> so these are so, so good. Um, so I, I hope that you all are getting some value out of this. We're, we're doing this to give back. You know, um, I would say, you know, like we're all echoing the same thing. Um, not driving the bus, you know, um, sitting in the receiving. One thing I'm sitting with is I wonder if it could be a good standard operating procedure in dating again i'm new to all of this um but what i'm thinking about is there is this culture of ghosting so if we're in some type of communication with the guy i think it's a good sop if you will uh where it's sort of like at any point that either of us loses interest or we realize that we're not you know, we're not a good match that we just we will just communicate that to each other because sometimes things fall off and things you both notice a shift, but no one's really naming it. And then you get this gray area and you're like, I think, I think we're, I think everything's great. But then, so I wonder, and this is some, this is just me thinking out loud. 
that I wonder if we could we could even be more intentional with with us just saying or having an expectation of you know if if, if if at any point this doesn't work out that we can just communicate that to each other and hold yourself to that standard because we owe that to each other and I think that provides so much clarity where if there's a shift or maybe there's interest loss or whatever the situation at least you'll know and I think that I think that that helps us as we move forward or if it doesn't apply, it doesn't apply. You move forward in a different way. But that was something that I was thinking about as a last point. Yeah. Yeah, I really like that, Hermesha. And there's, you know, we've all been talking about staying feminine as much as in our mind. We're already down the aisle, but realizing that it could go either way. And this is something that my guy tells me. And every time I'm hearing that, I'm just like, no, 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 but it has to work out. And he tells me all the time, look, I prepared myself not to get too excited and not to get too down in the dumps. I'm ready that it could go, you know, either way. And that's really hard as a woman uh, when we want something so bad. But I like what Hermesha said. And you know, again, this is just part of, I think, setting those boundaries. And because we can't change them, we can offer maybe in the beginning of a relationship this is what you know i'm looking to do you know of course i have no control over you but you know i offer that if for whatever reason i don't see a future with us i will give you the courtesy of letting you know and then you leave it there and see if he says anything or not that's also you know information but you can always set your standard and have your boundaries as how you're going to carry yourself and let the man decide, you know, if this is a match for him or not. So, you know, I know we've talked a lot here and I just want to say in the new year and with new beginnings, you know, real relationships, especially for women, when we're the ones, you know, on the receiving end of being asked, it's so precious and it's so rare. So take your time, make sure you make a distinction between dating and being in a relationship and again a man is the one who establishes the relationship and if he hasn't it's not our job to henpeck it's to assume that we don't have one until he says that we have one and you know it's okay if his timing is different from your timing um delivery um but yes, I just wanted to offer that. But while you're getting to know that man, get to know that man, enjoy, um, have your list, have all those things. But when you're with him, be present, be um, be uh, joyful and, you know, put your best foot forward and give it a good faith effort. Either way, if it ends up, what did Kevin always say? All of his exes, like he leaves them better than he found them or something like that. Like, even if it ends and sometimes breakups are bad, but, you know, as long as you maintain the caliber of woman that you are, hopefully that relationship, even if it doesn't have the ending that you want, it made you better than where you were in the beginning. So every opportunity is an opportunity to learn and grow. So we are at time. I absolutely love these conversations, ladies. It is in my heart to create a space where we are honest with each other. I appreciate you all uh, allowing us to share from our own personal experience and again for keeping, you know, our privacy. But we will see you back here on the next episode of the Wives Club. We've 